Welcome back here to Perspective here on the Rise News. Polygamy is commonly referred to as the union of a man with multiple women or the practice of having more than one wife at a time. There are many reasons why people engage in polygamy. These reasons may be religious or societal. There's also a reason for stability, safety, companionship, economic resources, reproduction, or even love. But polygamy can create a complex family system involving the husband's relationship between wives and children. Sometimes the husband may have a favorite wife or leanings towards the new wife, which can make the life of the first wife or other wives difficult. They might also be deprived of conjugal rights from their husbands because of rotational sharing. There's also competition, rivalry, struggle for attention, innate jealousy, and feeling signed light, which are also some of the emotions that raise its ugly head with wife and children in polygamous homes. That being said, polygamy can apparently also have its positive impacts. Some women claim that though polygamy has its disadvantages, to them, divorce is not an option. There's also the issue of religion for some, as they are accustomed to it. So sharing is something they welcome and actually embrace. Also, some childless wives, for instance, can be willing to accommodate other wives to obtain offspring and descendants for their husbands. Truth is, for polygamous families to develop supportive relationships, healthy communication, and mutual respect, teamwork, patience, humility, emotional intelligence, and a huge dose of wisdom is crucial. Very crucial. The dynamics of families have expanded over the past century from the standard patriarchal system to modern variations. Polygamy was rampant in centuries that required population growth at a time women were subordinately dependent and the ratio of women outweighed men. Today we have same-sex families and families that avoid marriage completely. The word marriage was derived from the Latin word mas, that means masculine. Marriages were established exogenously by men to maintain patriarchal leadership, to expand wealth through in-laws, and to raise children into a labor force. Polygyny, with multiple wives, was thereby seen as a wealth or power symbol whereas polyandry with multiple husbands was heavily despised. Recently in Somalia, an attractive 30-year-old polyandrous mother of eight children was stoned to death for having 11 husbands. In nearby Kenya, a polygynous man named Danger lived to almost 100 years with over 100 wives and over 200 children. Government and laws are extremely impactful on societal mentality and family dynamics. Polygamy in Nigeria is most common in states where gross domestic product is minimal, young educated wives are rampant, half-siblings compete for very limited resources, and conflicts occur very often. Many people make marital commitments based on money and intimacy, but the most successful marriages prioritize the five C's of compatibility, courtship, companionship, care, and children. Successful polygamous relationships ensure courtships between all spouses through plans for every child's future and meticulous equality and fairness to avoid jealousy, financial battles, and domestic violence. Intense discussions coming up shortly, but let's watch this special report. Perspectives will be right back. Polygamy. This is a practice of marrying multiple spouses, and it's common a lot in parts of Africa. Many people are used to monogamous relationships which involve being married to one person. But polygamy is an ancient custom. It was practiced by people in all parts of the world. However, the advantages and disadvantages of polygamous marriages. Some advantages some consider is the variety of having more than one wife. If you are in a polygamous marriage, you can have multiple partners at the same time without being accused of cheating. There is also the status symbol. In some cultures, having multiple spouses at the same time is also considered as kind of a status symbol. This is especially true for men. In fact, the more wives a man has, 
the higher his social status will be in society. While its advantages include, polygamy can be problematic from a legal and religious way. The expenses can be a lot. If you have multiple partners and you have to provide for them all, this can also be quite problematic from a financial standpoint. Also unhappiness and child's neglect can be an issue. As polygamous marriages can also lead to a state where the spouses get stuck in unhappy marriages. Today on Perspectives, we would be taking a look at some of the disadvantages and also the effects polygamy can have on children and how you can set boundaries for all the wives and more. Well, I don't know if you saw that video, which is what inspired me to choose the topic this week. I don't know if you saw that video of where um, the Speaker of the House, no need to call names, the Speaker of the House was being um, um, sworn in. Yeah. And <clears throat> initially it looked like a normal, happy husband and wife, mm -hmm. you know, the process was going on until out of nowhere, like lightning, <laughs> some woman now came from nowhere and forced herself to be beside the speaker. Oh, wow. And that in itself spoke volumes because it just makes you wonder mm. if, you, if this can happen in public mm -hmm. and she went to this extent without giving a damn exactly. about what the consequences will be. Mm. It makes you wonder that what is she saying inside? Is it that she has been sidelined for too long and this was mm. an opportunity she wanted to make, it, make her, her point? Or is it that <clears throat> she has always been troublesome and the husband cannot control mm. her? I think human emotions are just strong in general. So two women that are emotionally attached to one person, there will somehow be favoritism and one person will feel less loved at certain times. Mm -hmm. The man is not perfect, no one is perfect. So the woman that is feeling less loved, anger, depression, all sorts of thoughts come yes, those come into in. mind. And even with women marrying multiple husbands. No, let's not even go so down that one. Let me mention the case of the woman who married 11 husbands. Let's, the reason why she was stoned to death is because the two, two of the husbands were fighting uh, very But that bitterly. is not as common as polygamy. They, they are very rare. It's yes, a very rare case. Though, we but it happens, We know it happens, but let's focus on the issues of the polygamous man because that is more rampant right. Just than polygamy. polygamy. But polygamy is men and women. Uh, but what I'm saying is that 6,000 men to maybe one I woman. I give one example. I know, but I'm saying that yeah. polygamy is much more rampant. Yeah. Do you understand? I don't think we even have. That. I don't even think we have polyand. What the other one? The one that woman that marries several husbands. It I don't so. know. I know. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Like very but do we have any in Nigeria? Do we have any in Nigeria? Well, I don't know of any cases, but there might exactly. be some silent cases that, that just haven't come silent? to the surface. I don't think I know of any woman that has two husbands. <laughs> yeah. I know of women who but have not divorced yeah. their husbands like to as marry you somebody said, else. Polygyny is more rampant. Polygamy. But I just want to give the example that. People actually fight in polygamy. Yeah, but just, it's hard to maintain that love and I don't know, because equality over time. The issue of polygamy too, they're also the northerners. It's, they're Muslims. They're probably a lot more tolerant in polygamy than we the southerners mm. because it's not in our religion. But okay. the northerners, the Quran says, marry four wives if you can love them equally. I don't know yeah. how realistic that is. But, yeah. but the northerners tend to embrace polygamy and see it a right. second nature they don't I mean, see the big are deal traditionally religious who don't really follow either islam or christianity are practicing polygamy there are even christians who practice polygamy yeah, Christians are practicing exactly polygamy. so polygamy is inherent in our system but i think it's more mm -hmm. acceptable in the north because their religion allows it i think more of poverty yes the religion and poverty uh, well maybe so poverty. They are, well there are polygamous wives who are married to, to, to poor men there are some wives who exactly. the men even marry them because they are financially independent. Right. The, the poverty is so much that they just want to pin themselves, be dependent on someone at that point in time. Yeah, but we are talking about even the poor men who are right. polygamous. I mean, I know security men, for instance, who have yeah. two wives. I know cooks who have three wives. Yeah. And obviously those wives have to find their own independence somewhere because they mm -hmm. cannot rely on this one sole provider. Right. So some men to also 
But before marriage, they are thinking, yes, okay, they, 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 they intentionally maybe. choose certain mm. women as their wives because they feel that the women are independent enough to take care of themselves. Right. But majority of the time, though, the right. women marry for comfort, right. security, financial security, right. and what There are lots of beggars. I think it was Sokoto that the king was actually begging the people on the street to stop to marrying multiple wives. There are people wow. who actually don't have sustainable income don't have their own wealth and are actually marrying multiple wives. It's well, that's double-edged, that's double-edged Wahala. <laughs> anyway, we're heading for a short break, but stay with us because when we return, we will have here with us our beautiful guests for the topic, I.D. Peter and Elv Elvina Ibru. Perspectives will return in just a moment. Now on to introducing our guests. First off is I.D. Peter, an integrative life coach, speaker, and founder of Blaze of Light Academy. I.D. is widely known as the voice of impact because she uses her skills as a life coach, a neuro-linguistic practitioner, and a Maxwell DISC personality trainer to ensure that people experience a mind shift that transforms their lives in order to live their full potentials. She is the founder of the Like Fine Wine program, which is a movement that creates the awareness of physical, mental, and spiritual self-care in women over 40 years old. She is also the author of You've Been Hacked and Tabitha Arise. Born into a polygamous family, she is here today to share her experience. Very warm welcome to you. Glad to have you with us today, ID. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Also joining us is Elvina Baby Ibru, who was introduced to the magical world of musical theater at a very early age. From that time, she participated and excelled in all areas of the arts. In 1989, she auditioned to get into the largest and most prestigious theatre youth group in England called the National Youth Music Centre. Elvina was hooked. At her A-levels, she auditioned and got into the famous London Academy of Performing Arts and graduated with honours and the classical prize in her pocket. She went on to have a very successful career in the West End of London, performing at theatres such as the Old Vic, the Lyric and the Lyceum Theatre. After a stint in radio with the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, Irvina decided to go back to university. Three years later, she graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Relations from Webster University, London, after which she immediately flew back to her beloved Nigeria and started trying to make a difference in the world of the arts here. Throughout her career in Nigeria, Elvina has been involved in broadcasting, performance in music, theatre and film, and eventually she opened her own production house called Twice As Nice Limited. Welcome, Elvina, and welcome so both much. of you to Perspectives. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. The reason why I insisted on having both of you was because you both come from polygamous homes. And as they say, now person wear a wear shoe, they know as the pin up for leg. But at the other end, like I was saying to ID, some don't have horror stories to tell. So it all depends on where you're coming from. Like I was saying to my co-host, I don't know, I, I think I sent you guys the videos yeah. of the incidents with the um, Speaker of the House and what yes. have you. Yes. Now, what came to both your minds when you saw it? Let's start with you, Elvina. Ooh, um, I, I was embarrassed and um, it, it, I, something came to mind. It was a slightly different thing. It was with me and my dad. Okay. When I, I was dancing with my dad mm -hmm. at one of my siblings' weddings and one of his wives came and pulled me away from him. Wow. Oh, wow. And me being me, Pulled him back. <laughs> no, don't tell me. You're both, both, both of you are struggling. We're not struggle because I'm a strong person. <laughs> I pull my papa and I hold my papa and I tell her, I say, you can never be his daughter and I can never be his wife. Yeah, that's a good parting shot. That's and good. then I, I boned and danced with my father again. Then again exactly. <laughs> you know? But what about ID? What did you think? I think the first thing it? I thought was, what would my dad had done? What would my dad had done? I know my father, he was a proud polygamist, very proud. He will tell you wherever he's going, he will tell you I'm coming with my two wives. Mm. So well, if it, that, I think that's yeah, important. Yeah, actually. if that it was my dad, the two women, 
Good day. Yeah, but when you have seven wives, uncle, how do you do it? I don't, I don't know about <laughs> seven wives, but I'm sure that if my Which dad married seven, seven wives, seven. his seven wives, because he was like very that. proud of mm -hmm. him being a polygamist, and he would tell you, I'm coming with my wives, make sure there are two seats, mm -hmm. one this way and the one the other side. Mm -hmm. And each wife knew the position they would take. Mm -hmm. So he was really, my dad would have made sure that the two women but are But in terms of relationships, I'll ask again, what was the relationship between your mother and the other wives? Um, my mother was a very, very friendly. In fact, when she passed on, mm -hmm. um, one of the wives, she was crying so much. She said, what am I going to do without my support? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, my mom was extremely nice to the other women and extremely... Um, she was the first wife, wasn't yeah, she? she mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was very adamant about the siblings, us, being together. The siblings of all the wives. Yes, okay. as I was saying to... ID that um, we were not allowed to say half step you know your brother is your brother your sister is your sister um, you know there was one wife that was not particularly nice but mm -hmm. even with her my mom tried to still you know but are you are you, are you also sure that even you the children too because children too can be quite difficult mm -hmm. we, we, we were always close I like that we were mm -hmm. always close because of my, my mom we were always mm -hmm. close. Yeah, but I know and that some fathers prefer to have, or you were saying that, prefer mm -hmm. to have the children grow up yeah. together so that you don't feel a sense of half and half. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So I've noticed that children who grew up in the same house, from what I've heard from polygamy, my polygamous, my friends who grew up in polygamy, say that they were, not made, they were not made to feel as if one child was special because of your mother yeah. or the other. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But then again, you also have children who will tell you and vow that they will never be involved in polygamy should they get married because of the experience that they had, maybe being sidelined or not being well treated by the mother. So do you think <clears throat> that the role of the man is what determines how the relationship would be with the children, between the children? Yes, I do. Why I so? Think, I think that because my father was very into making sure that we are together. And we live in different states. In mine, it was different. We didn't grow up in the same house. Mm. Um, my other sibling grew up in Cross River State. We grew up in Aquaibom State. But every time during that December period, we were brought together. Now, respect was one value he emphasized on. It was so, uh, he, he put that value so much that if my father had sweets to share to mm -hmm. all of us, he made sure he calls us by our, the first person comes, the second person comes, nobody comes before the other person. So yes, the, the father first and foremost has that major, major role to play in the lives of the children to say, hey, even if I have two wives and you people don't stay together, make sure that you people, you always stress on us being together. And I was talking to her, I said, the first wife too plays a very, yeah, I think so. very major role. She was telling me about her mom. I said, yes, because it's the way you, you are the one that is first being affected by polygamy. Mm -hmm. it, it's your space that somebody has come into and how you treat that person and how you tell your children, because most times, your children are always there before the other children comes, uh -huh. or sometimes they grow together. How you tell your child how he's supposed to treat this woman? If you disrespect the other woman, your children will grow up in a in a place that they feel they can disrespect anyone. Uh -huh. So yes, first and foremost, the father and the first wife really has a major role in you know, balancing the whole polygamy. Can, can mm -hmm. I come in there? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. Well, we're both from polygamous families, but because of our experiences, I have a different opinion mm. okay i would say that it's it's the woman it's because woman my, my dad was so busy mm. it wasn't as if he was even he even had time to even you know the man was a billionaire he was mm. in russia japan did this mm. that in between were the women mm. if you know what i mean mm. <laughs> i think my father's first wife was actually his work so what, what, what were the downsides so, of polygamy for your mom <sighs> The obvious now. I mean, she's right. a human being, mm -hmm. you know. When he's with his other wives, apart from the other wives, of course, there were still chicks on the side. Yeah, that's you know. a, Those are two also had children, but he didn't Yes, marry. yes. Yeah, okay. You know, my, my father true. had 18 children. Wow. Six women. Wow. Uh, my mom had the bulk 
um, Auntie, Cecilia, Auntie Cecilia had seven, my mom had six. And then it was a very busy between, man. It was one, 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 one. You wow. know, like, like that. But did those uh, children come into your homes? Of course. They all, but did they my grow up in your homes? My mother would not have any other way. No, the children yeah. that were born they, outside. They, they, they were all with they their mothers. The they were all in, with yeah. their mothers, but we were like this. Okay, oh, so were you not in the same compound? No, no. Oh, no, that's no. interesting. Oh, so you only so married two wives, homes. but yes. had children from six women yes oh okay yes. and all separate homes the mothers were not all living together homes. i think homes. polygamy is more rampant than we actually think come to think of it because i'm also from a polygamous family oh. oh my father had two wives but 11 children one wife had five another had four and then two more children from outside the family this is jara of extra from us we never called each other step sibling half sibling yeah. we didn't so try to know the other and the other woman live in the same house as well yes oh today i call my siblings like people want me to say oh who is from this mother i don't know i don't want to know they are my siblings yes absolutely i love all my siblings equally we're yeah. all together but what how many children did your dad have ten. and wives ten um but two from the same situation um mm. two other women but what i find amazing too is that there's also strength in silence because i think to a certain extent as a like your mother your mother your mother all yeah. of you in these polygamous homes i think there's some battles that you should just let go mm. but then again mm. One also worries whether in your silence it will not be taken for from for stupidity, for foolishness, for yes. foolishness. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So I'm wondering whether <clears throat> all your mothers, in fact, right now, three of you together, <laughs> I'm wondering whether there were, there were times when the otherwise provoked your mother, and your mother chose to rise above it and also not let it affect her relationship with this with the stepchildren. I'm wondering whether mm -hmm. there were occasions like that. In my family, there was division Several. of labor. And my dad had to establish, okay, this wife from January to May, you are in the kitchen. This wife, you are oh, monitoring okay. wow. the cleaning of the house. There was serious division of labor in wow. the family. But were there any clashes between your, your, your mother and the other They were the other in two wife. different rooms and they all had their separate staff. I think my dad really organized it in a way that ah. it was a community that worked. It was a group marriage. How was yeah. that for you, Elvina? Uh, was it the same? No. Separate homes. No, no. Completely different homes. Okay, so your mom, mm. who, but so who was it that, that at any given time? Your mom was the one that was in the house. And then the other wife was Then when I was outside. 12, he moved out. That nearly killed my mother. Mm. Mm. Moved to where? He moved to Auntie Cecilia's place. Auntie oh, Cecilia okay. had been in England oh, okay. for a while, mm. for a long time. And then when she came back home, he he moved out of our yes. house and moved in with but when well, he moved another house with Auntie he, Cecilia, yeah. was he rotating or he just moved there permanently? Oh no, he would he would come he would come home what sometimes. Was, mm. okay. What was yours like? My, mine is different. Um, uh, I would say my dad spent fifty percent of his life alone, living by himself. Then the other fifty between the other um, two, two families. Yes, he was a banker, so he he stayed here in Lagos most of his time. And then when he's on vacation, he sort of shuttles between there and there. He wasn't really, um, I can't remember my dad staying six months. Wow. Or three one, months. In one place. In, in one my place. own house, wow. yeah. So he was more like um, visiting, sort of. I remember that you me. said that that affected you when you got married. Can yes. you please let yes, tell us more about uh, that? Because I did not, I did not have this um, example of a home that you have a father mother waking up together going out together taking me to school i didn't have that mm. i was always in a place of um i have a father he comes he visits then he goes mm. back to work or mm. he's with the other family mm. and um, my mother was everything she was the driver to school she was this mm. if he's around he does it but I, I i wasn't really in a place of knowing how a husband and wife really live so have a permanent together. man in the yeah. house kind of thing. Yes. So when I when I got married, I had to learn how to be a wife. Wow. wow. Yeah, I had to learn how to wake up to know what to do with this man. <laughs> that, was, that, that is constantly in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my husband had to be very patient <clears> with me because I didn't, I mean, I, I, I was too independent because I grew up with an independent woman. She just had to be everything. Mm. So I, I didn't know how to divide the role that this is what father should do. So I wanted to be everything. I wanted to be independent, and it, it rocked the boat a bit before mm. I knew how to really settle. Yes, it affected me. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. What about when um, financial independence? Mm. Is it important 
for women in polygamous homes to be financially independent? Um, How very important is it? Women in general, absolutely. absolutely. Mm. Too important. Whether you are polygamous or monogamous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think more so when you are in a polygamous setting because you have to take care of your own in case. Yeah. In because case, funny yes. enough, as, sound, as, as strange as it sounds, like I was saying to a lateral, you actually have poor men who have several wives. Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I don't even understand it. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Do you understand? And then the wives are the ones that go to taking look for fun, taking children. care of him. Yeah, him, yes, house. it happens. Yeah. But, but what about when it comes to pertinent information? Because, I mean, <laughs> my one man, one woman self go on, there's wala when it comes to will or no mm. will. Mm. So, do you think it's important? I wanted to get a man for this thing, but I just thought, hmm. <laughs> the only person I had in mind has seven wives. I didn't think one hour was long enough to, to, to go into <laughs> that. To go into that, so I'm reserving him for another day. Yeah. But um, when it comes to your will, when it comes to your wealth mm -hmm. and your assets and what have you, how important do you think it is for the man to ensure that all the wives, or do they let all the wives know, or is it only the first wife that will know his true wife? I think every, it should be transparent. Transparent. Yeah. It should be transparent. No, but there have been instances where I'm sure it's not that transparent. And it causes issues after it's Oh, yes. Ah, yes. I've yes. seen serious issues. last wives live in penury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I recall mm -hmm. about 20 oh, yes. years ago when I was much younger, I remember my mom, my mom had this friend. And all the woman used to do was come and sell jewelry to her. Mm. And this was jewelry that her husband bought for her oh. while they were married. Wow. Mm. I think she married the man at 19 or something. And then another thing that men do, I don't know how feasible it is. It's like when the Quran says love all women equally, I don't think that's possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can love your children equally, but I don't know whether you can love wives equally. I don't think you can even love your children equally yeah, if you yeah. want to be treated Exactly. Yes. Mm. Now, in this case, this last wife was his favorite. Mm. She married him in his old age. So she got to enjoy all the wealth when he was alive. When he was alive. But she was also too young to understand emotional intelligence. Do you understand? Mm. Then the man just dies. And of course, she didn't work. Mm. So she spent, all I remember was every time I see this woman, she, you see her with her small pouch, the Aye, most beautiful jewelry. She was, her, her yeah. children Aye. were suffering. Aye. The first thing they did was even drive her, because she was one living with the man in the house. They mm. first drove her out. Wow. So the importance when of Shabam women... was beautiful jewelry. This was before he No, passed. that no. I, the jewelry that he bought for her, you she was not selling it to raise money me. because she had no other source oh. of livelihood. Mm. She sold all her jewelry. Mm. It got so bad that what she was not bringing was just, you know, some rem, little, little remnants here and there. But I remembered, <clears throat> it must have been about 40 years ago. I remember even at that young age, mm. I remember thinking it is so important that a woman should, should oh, be financially yeah. independent. <laughs> but there are many women like that. Mm. Mm -hmm that don't prepare for greater yes. tomorrows, mm -hmm. that think that this man will live forever. Mm -hmm. I also think it's not fair on the man, the husband, to relegate all the other wives or to the background and focus on just it's one. Not. Yeah, it's, it's not. not. It's, it's not. not. Yeah. It's, it's the devil. I told you, polygamy yes, is the devil. Because that's what breeds <laughs> jealousy and content. It's, it's, yes. If honestly, um, I think the joy that both of us have is that I don't, I don't think, I can say authoritatively, I can beat my chest, mm -hmm. that if any of my father's wives are badly off, there's no way they will come to us and they will not be looked after. Well, that's good. That's, there's the no unity way. In From my, all my brothers mm. to... And all of you are close, right? There's yes. no, you can't yeah. tell us the difference. If that's I was in trouble polygamy. today, there's mm -hmm. no sibling yeah. that, you can that I call. cannot call. Mm -hmm. So there's Same something... Yeah. There's, that's a good part of polygamy. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's yeah. not yeah. all well, it bad. No, no, no. It depends on... Band. It depends... For instance, this woman in poverty, she mm. must have several... You know, the wives must have children that can help But I also think she didn't also treat them well. I think to a certain Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. She herself was too young to understand Stand emotional it wasn't, yeah. said it already yes. that it wasn't fair. She enjoyed the she best enjoyed. of him during her tenure yeah. with yeah. him. So the equality had been. Yeah. And not the other best of friends. Friends. But it should be done time. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I'm going to do you understand? Yeah. You know? So I think it still comes from the parents, I think. You know, the way the, the moms and the father conduct themselves. But what are the main right? qualities you think a polygamist must have? to make sure that his home is run smoothly mm. as a man. Oh, you must have leadership quality. You must be, you must be able to put your foot down. 
You know, women is not easy to control us sometimes. It's not even easy to control it's one woman. Yeah, yeah, it's, not, yeah. <laughs> it's not easy, you know. So you must be able to put your foot down on some things. I mean, all, not all the things, because I must say, even if my father was, you know, a man of authority, there are some things. Time, he told my brother-in-law, one of them, and said, no matter what you do, don't consider marrying two wives. Well, wow, oh. that note, let's go to the break. We're going on the break right now. And uh, we'll come back with sweet time. <laughs> See you right back. See you soon. <laughs> I did there's something you brought up that maybe gave me cause for worry actually. You said that towards the tail end of your father's life, yes. the wives had lost interest in him or were not really as supportive as they were. Is that from years of being ignored or years of anger or why why exactly not really lose interest per se just that you know sometimes when you don't have a time to really bond with so many people and there's a time that you now want to come back home they've become too independent okay too independent you know mm. so they've, they've gone ahead to have their own lives they have what they're doing mm. they've, they've Maybe they've bonded with the children so much mm -hmm. that they can't give you the hundred percent that you now that you want. Now want. And you so can't true. really blame anyone because when you are not present at every time, somebody has to do something. Especially in milestones. Yes. So that that's what really happened. At the at the end, um, he basically almost just stayed by himself. Oh. Yeah, and you know the the he, he chose to have a family that was separate. He chose to live most of the time by himself. So you can't expect everybody now that have now had so stuff much to in your do. father's case there was three there were three. There's one with wife one, one with wife two, then him on his own. No 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 he, there Not was in the time that he where he spent time on his own. Yeah. And like yours I, that I the said, two wives were yeah. in the house. Yes. Twenty four seven. Yes. So you are saying that you were two, two different homes. Two different yeah. homes. And inside even with those two different homes, yes. there was also time that he, he likes to stay. Yeah, he yeah, he likes to stay on his so own. He lived mm. as a so he lived alone right? at some point. <laughs> he lived um what should I well, you know so as was a banker a bachelor. as a banker, he wasn't really in the same location at all okay, of us. Okay. So when he came back, but really you should know that when, as you live your life, you condition yourself to be somewhere. I don't think my father would have even been comfortable staying in a house with a wife throughout his life because that's mm. not how he conditioned himself, mm. really. So he probably had concubines. Yeah, you... you she had, well, they had two children. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay, well, then just like yeah. your father had six Yeah, extra. yeah, he, he had. So, it, it, I mean, it, it won't be something that you're really used to. You can't change something. So, he was probably a chronic bachelor, inherently, mm -hmm. deep down. I know he was a great dad. I know yeah. that he loved his, his women. Mm. Well, let me because ask you this. Because he didn't have just two wives. And this is coming from your program, Like Fine Wine. Yes. I love that title. Yeah. So, we've talked about how polygamy has been good for some of us have had very good experiences with it. Mm. But for those that it became very toxic for them. Mm. So for instance, a woman fell in love, thought she was her husband's main love. Mm. And before you know it, he brings in somebody else and says, Especially sorry. Especially when they that love was by mistake. Have mm. No, right. it, it, the one that what when you marry, when you, the man didn't have anything. Right, the right. Love and was they were yes. together. Yes. Then when you then don't get money, was, thank you. But still, you even helped him. Make that money. Mm. Please remind and me to tell you my mom. <laughs> yes, my mom Please. Is to tell, remind me. But that that first wife, painful part. Right, that first wife is now being treated really poorly. Her yeah. self-esteem is dwindling. She's just losing who she was. Yeah. And he married her as a fine wine. Yeah. How does she rejuvenate that fine wine? Mm. Is it to divorce? Mm. Or what are your recommendations for her? I think first and foremost, you have to know that. I always tell somebody, when you get... To heaven god will not ask you what did you do with your children with your husband he said, what did you do with your life so you have to that's give fantastic. account for your yeah. life that's fantastic. for your life mm -hmm. because um i believe that we are ambassadors on earth sent by god for a reason for a purpose and the worst thing to, for you to do is to live a life not discovering and living your purpose mm -hmm. which you have to give account for at the end of the day you know so you have to discover yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to know who you are. You have to live your life first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You are first and foremost a being, a person, mm -hmm. before you are now a wife and a mother. Mm -hmm. These are roles. She has five children for she this has, man. She has and five they are all children. dependent, including herself. 
How does she rejuvenate beyond all that? Oh, she did She's dependent. Oh, get a job. Okay. Get she has to money. get a job. She has to find herself. She has no, to No, but I can see where what she's good at. Mm. A lot of is coming mm, from. Yeah. Because sometimes, right? I mean, there have been instances where your self esteem is so badly beaten. Is so badly mm. beaten mm. That you don't even have the courage or confidence mm. to get up. I'm not saying it's impossible. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not as cut and dry. Of mm. course, everybody knows. As a woman, especially when you're in a polygamous home, or um, more, yeah. arrange yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Whether through the man who financially or go and look for how you can make your money. Mm -hmm. But a lot of women, because they have had to share, yeah. mm -hmm. because they've been sidelined, mm -hmm. because there's been jealousy, <clears throat> sometimes even because there's preferential tr treatment to the children of the second wife rather than the first wife, mm -hmm. it leaves you helpless. Get a coach. Get a life coach. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Maybe that's, so maybe that's more like it. Coach. Get a life I wrote, coach. I wrote a book, yes. Tabitha Arise. Okay. I believe that there's a spirit in every woman called Tabitha, and okay. it's within you. Oh. And sometimes that light can be dimmed, mm. but it can never fade yeah. and it can yeah. never die. Yeah. So when you get a coach, the coach helps you to ignite that which is within you. Oh. So if you're a woman struggling, get a life coach. There is something within you called Tabitha, mm. and we can help you ignite it and, you know, when you see a, when you see the power of a woman, mm -hmm. when you see you know you can say oh this woman the husband is treating her but touch her child then that's when you understand yeah, the power. Yeah, She's right. ready to carry blocks on her head mm -hmm. just to faint for that child. That's <coughs> her tabita that rises up within her. Elvina. So when you get a coach, mm -hmm. the person can ignite your. You tabita. told us that there's something. You said something reminded you. you. Right. Something reminded you. They were going My to share something with to us. say that. Uh, we used to think we used to take it for something else. It was it's in my old years I, I now understand what she was trying to say. Mm. She said, Don't ever marry a man that does not have money. Mm. Mm. And I used to think, ah, uh -uh, but this is not like my mom. Love everybody. If he's poor, rich, you know. I then realized in my you know, as I was growing up, that what she meant was that you never know the true character of a man mm, until, until he has, he has money. money. Mm. 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 So marry a man that has money because mm. you are going to marry his true character. Mm. Because a man that has no money can be very humble. Mm. Mm. <laughs> then the day we get money, it is now that's where we would talk. Mm. And uh, sorry, I'm talking about uh, you know women that are in the situation yeah. and you know what do they do. My mom mm -hmm. was superwoman. Mm -hmm. She was superwoman. This thing has affected me deeply, polygamy, because as you can Why? see, my hand is very empty. Mm -hmm. you said, I'm happily unmarried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell it's us. not because they don't want to marry me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, no woman. Yeah, I find girl now, find me. Tell us more. My mom was superwoman, but mm -hmm. every superhero has a weakness. Yeah. Yes. I was, you know, what's Superman's your own was, was it crypt kryptonite or whatever? My mom's weakness mm -hmm. was the love she had for, mm -hmm. for my father. Yeah, yeah. same here. That was it. She was, now she first gave my papa money to start business. Wow. Mm -hmm. She had seven children because she had uh, my eldest brother. Um, Oscar. She had with no, no, no. My eldest brother is okay. called Namdi Azikiwe. Okay, okay, Unfortunately, okay, possible. Yeah, my true. mom had a child with Zeke first mm. before she met mm. my dad. So okay. she had seven children. She had mm. her own business. She fine. She Super started woman, everything no. about house mm. to clean. I have OCD because of my mom. Mm. We did Sabi cook all the food for this life. I call him girl. <laughs> when he reached France, he goes speaking shushu fro fro fro. When it comes to high on society, TV. you know, if it's yeah, to meet people, it's to be there. Mm. That woman was that woman could do everything. She could sew, she could knit, she could this, she wow. could that. What's on the top of that, the man. On top that of that. that. So when I say it affects me, mm. yeah. Psychologically, sometimes I think I'm not even ten percent of what my mother was. Mm. For me, to me, I never even start for where my mama did. And man still no stay with her one place. Uh, well, so, so why would they this. stay with me? No, 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 Kind of what you say. I, I don't think I can be with one man every day for that. Yes. <laughs> I, I get my life. But haven't you ever had a haven't you ever had a living with a boyfriend? Haven't you ever had somebody that you lived with? Have you ever lived with a man? Yeah, yeah. but they don't live too much like that. Because <laughs> after some days I say, bros. <laughs> you get out so that time. You know, and, and and it's hard for me to go and stay. <clears throat> With men, so it's a psychological thing. Yeah, it's space. Space. Yeah, it's, a, like, it's a psychological thing, it and is. I'm sure there are also children like you who grew up in polygamous homes. I think the way you think, mm. 
Do you understand? Oh, yeah. Because of what they've experienced. Well, we're in 2023. They're doing therapy in Nigeria now. So, mm. you know. Because I'm 51 now. And the thing is still never... It's still marriage is not for everybody. And that's just the truth. Not everybody wants to be... But are you, a, are you a romantic, though? Even oh, with, I, like, I with all of us. I suspect and that you And when I love, be. I... Uh, yeah, passionately. My baba, they enjoy my well. Person. My, my person. Them my well person. Well. I feel you. <laughs> you speak the same language. Hopeless romantic. Yeah, so am I. You know? But... Look, looking back now at how you grew up in polygamy and what have you, how if your daughter came to you now, either of you, and says that you know she's met a man that she's in love with, blah 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 blah, but he's married, but this man is ready to take care of her, would you discourage her? If I conquer <laughs> <laughs> the love, eh? you know, I remember one time my brother was angry with somebody, and I said, "Leave him, he's the devil." He said, "If I slap him." The devil go wrong. <laughs> when I conquer that love, wow. could disappear. Okay, but what about if he's okay? But but if it, what about if he's not still married to the woman, but they're separated? You should divorce her. Mm. Then come back. Mm. When they don't sign the paper, you should come do you think back. it's your independence that made you not want to get married? Your independence part, probably I think a big partly, part of partly, it. Partly, because mm. like I said, I can't imagine waking up. Every you sound day. very independent. I love I mm -hmm. I love very deeply, but I can't be. I'm not the type of person that. Can be with you every, you know, even my son. I tell him, Elisha, I beg, I need my space. Allow me. I'm not your mm -hmm. wife, <laughs> you know. So I, I think independence is, is is a big part of it. Like you said, you had to really adjust. Yeah, yeah. I did. But you like in, in both your cases, were there times when you felt sidelined because of your situation by your father, where you felt that he could have spent more time with you, where you felt angry that you had to share him with everybody else. Well, maybe I was lucky in the sense that I'm very loving. And my mom was very loving. So mm. Were you first child? You, no, she's not. Tata, okay. from my <laughs> mom. That's her first child. I'm from in 11 in, with all mm. of us. Oh, wow. Tata from my mm. mom. Mm. So even if my papa don't come meet me, I did go meet him. <laughs> so my even mom. when he was living with Auntie Cecilia, you used to go there? Before. Okay, the I house go, was open to even everybody. Even when I was old, as in when I was a full adult, and I, you know, I used to be very big. Yeah, I go and sit on him, I hold him. And he said, oh, all this Cameroonian and Calabar behavior. <laughs> I say, yes, it's Cameroonian and Calabar, I jam myself, mm. all, you know? So because I knew my dad, because my dad was very loving, but he didn't, sh he, he, he's not, my dad is the kind of person, you don't know what he's thinking. Mm. You know, he had that look. He, meanwhile, he's thinking, oh, I just love this, my daughter so much, but you don't, you will not yeah. know. So. Um, if you go to him, he will embrace you. But don't expect him to come to you. Mm. You understand? So because I knew that about him, I never felt sidelined or funny or this or that. But that has a lot to do with your character. Yes. Uh, you know, that's why I said maybe that's why I'm lucky. Yes. Mm -hmm. Boisterous. Yes. There are people who will be the exact opposite. Yes. They'll be staying they away have, thinking yes, that this the man doesn't, yes. Because the man, for some reason, yeah. is not available as and when he should be. There'll be mm. milestones that he hasn't yeah. Some of my siblings are like Do you understand? That. Yes. So in, I I think, in, in your my case, own case, I think I grew up in the situation, so I didn't know the difference. Oh, okay. So, um, truthfully, having my dad even come to stay with us for too long was my problem. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because, because I, like yeah, it. because I wasn't used to it, you know. I, I, I'll be, I mean, I liked, I, I love my dad, but I, I was so used to being with my mom. Because when he comes, uh, you have to run around, you have to cook for dad, your mother says, bring this. I'm, I wasn't used to taking care of another person apart from my mom. So, I will always be... Wondering when, when is he going? So that, <laughs> but what is so most everything important is that both your moms were financially independent. Oh, my, yes, my, yes, which is a primary, yes, a primary yes. prerequisite. Yes, that if you're going to even get involved or be in polygamy, you must be financially independent to a certain extent. It's important. Yeah. No, it it's hundred percent. I agree. Very, very, very because important. exactly. Yeah. Because, very, very uh -huh. yes. because there are wives too who are so domineering; they can control the man's posturing. Oh yeah. So if she is not happy with you as a wife, she can tell the husband not to no, give you. No, look after yeah. this. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that vivid memory of that young wife that used to come and sell her jewelry came into my keeps in, you know, makes me remember that. Look, Nothing they like make you get your own kudi. Mm -hmm. Anything the man gives you is an, an added bonus. That's mm -hmm. extra. even if you're not in a polygamous home. Exactly. Exactly. But as a woman, you should yeah. also. be financially yes. Yes. That's yeah. the key. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Elvina. Thank you, ID. Thank this you. Was a very, although brief, 
Well, it's quite exciting <laughs> conversation. <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you, thank so you for having so us. Thank you for, thank you for being with us in Perspectives. Well, that was a very interesting episode. I'm sure you agree with me. Anyway, they say how you make your bed is how you lie on it. For some women, they would rather play in a big house that provides all the comfort they need instead of living in a small house that doesn't meet their needs. Some will go as far as to say half a loaf of bread is better than none. Every woman involved in polygamy or single marriage, or sorry, monogamy, has a choice on whether to stay or leave. So wherever you find yourself, single, married, or sharing your man, you need to ensure that you are empowered mentally, financially, emotionally, and spiritually to make the best out of your life and those of your children. Always remember, life continues to be a learning curve. And that's all we have time for today. You've been watching Perspectives here on Arise News with me, Ruth Osime. And with me, Olatorera Majekodumi Oniru. Your level of intrinsic wealth, happiness, education, and comfort before marriage is a strong determinant of your standard of living after marriage. The acquisition of more will not always equate a positive result. More money will not always equate less problems, and more spouses may equate more heartache. The dynamics of polygamy are complex and marriage is not for everyone. Push your dreams on what works best for you and your community. The key to healthy marriages today is prioritizing the five C's of compatibility, courtship, companionship, care, and children. Thank you for watching Perspectives. Thank you to our special guests for joining us today. Have a very great weekend and see you all soon. Goodbye.